go. What's up, guys? How you guys doing today? Cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get going. I've never done a stream before, so uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm gonna try to juggle watching your chat, and and Muhammad and Joe are gonna help me with whatever questions you guys have. Um, I'll be answering them throughout, uh, but also I'm gonna try to just bang out a painting or start a painting at least in the next hour. Um, I'm gonna start with the blank canvas, and and some of you guys on. Uh, Instagram had mentioned wanting to see some destruction, see that whole process. So I'm gonna deliver, give you guys what you want. Do a little uh, destroyed city. Uh, and I've kind of pulled some references already, but I found, um, you know, when I'm doing these kinds of things, I usually like to start with the plate. Um, and when you're doing studio work, they'll usually give you a plate to, to destroy. So I found this cool cool photo um yeah it's super high res and i think it's going to be a good uh good starting point for us let's just get this composition in here and start sketching something out set up some guides Get that rule of thirds going. Cool, that's actually perfect. And I'm gonna do a really crappy sketch. Um, question, starting your mentorship in a week. So excited. My question, any good resources for map painting history or for 3D projections? So that's uh, two opposite ends of the, of the spectrum. But um, for map painting history, there's a great book called The Invisible Art that I can't recommend enough. Um, that kind of like runs through the entire history of map painting from, from the very start of the whole thing. And, uh, and for projections, um, I'm, I'm working on something to try to explain um, like new projections for, for painters. Um, there's not a lot of great online resources for it right now, so I'm, I'm on it, buddy. I got you. So I'm going to just start carving out of this plate and kind of just see where, what I want to destroy. Um, We'll start really rough and then we'll start laying in some photos. You guys, uh, do you guys want me to throw, uh, like, uh, painting, you know, I'm, I'm going to answer questions throughout, but, um, you know, just painting in silence, and I'm, I don't get to hear your beautiful voices. Do you guys want me to throw on some music in the background while I do this, or, uh, or should we just keep it just you and me? Okay, well, I'll try to talk as much as possible. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just kind of the, the mindless crappy sketch, but I'm, I am still thinking about like where I want to pull the eye and, uh, and I really want to pull the eye to this little gap over here. Um, and kind of using destruction, one of the nice things about like doing destroyed cities is you have a lot of just line work. Um, so that all these lines can help point you in the direction that you want to take take the viewer. 
Um, and with that, like over here, I'm going to point them upwards. And then we want to give them like a payoff, like whoever's looking at the painting needs a payoff when they follow these lines. Um, so I'm going to give them, give you guys something like, like a giant big tower that's all destroyed back here. We'll make sure that that's hitting our, our rule of thirds. And then maybe a couple, a couple others to help connect us. And far distant. And this is really where, like, I think this is where all the creativity really happens. Like, after you have this rough, crappy sketch, then it's just about executing, and, and there's not that much creativity in, in doing, like, a technical execution of this whole thing. Um, so I, I really have a lot of fun doing this side of things, even if it's not, if it's not pretty. Um, but I think that kind of that gives us a good good starting point, so we have a, a game plan of what we're going to do. Um, and then, you know, one of the other things that I really like to get in there as quickly as possible is a um, just a good working sky, uh, just something to set the mood. And and right now, this is happy and cheerful. And we could go happy and cheerful destruction like the aftermath. Um, but I usually like if I'm going to do a destruction piece, I want to have a little more. Um, I guess mood to the whole thing. So I'm gonna just um, merge all of this into a layer and call this sketch. Name this plate. And I'm gonna quickly, I won't take up too much time masking, but that is half of the job of a, of a matte painter. So I'm gonna get this out, banged out as quick as possible. I actually like, like there's a ton of masking to do all the time, but I actually really enjoy masking because it's it's almost like therapeutic. Uh, I know a lot of people like if if you're in a studio crunch time and, and you're a senior matte painter, I'll, sometimes they'll like give you people to mask out your elements, which is I, I've always thought that was insane. Um, because, you know, they'll mask a ton of just every reference you pull, but you're probably not going to use most of that. Um, and if I'm doing it myself, I'll have it blocked in before I start masking. Or just mask as I go so that I'm not wasting time. And I'm using quick masks right now, by the way. Um, which I like, you know, when, when you're painting in what you want to keep versus out what you want to lose. Um, I prefer using quick masks. Cool. And I actually, I'm going to keep just a chunk of this building because um, I want to destroy the top of it. And I'm going to destroy most of this building too, but I'll just keep this in for now. And, you know, another, <laughs> I'm sorry if you guys are like tuning in and you're just like, oh shit, he's going to be masking for the next hour because that is probably true. <laughs> That's most of this job. It's funny, so many people, when they took the Learn Squared course, their first reaction was like, holy crap, matte painting is a ton of work. <laughs> it was like, damn straight it is. It's not, you know, there's some exciting bits to it, but it's a lot of like tedious, you know, tedious work because all these little details and, and even just like the quality of your masks all add to um, photo, the photorealism. Like if you do a, a, a crappy mask and there's edges everywhere, um, then, then your painting isn't going to look real. Uh, so for trees, I'm going to use like a, a 
just like a leaf brush. Something like this. That'll just quickly give me a good edge. You get really fast at, uh, at masking when you do it this much. Um, after I get these little details, then I can move on. Cool. So I'm not, now I'm gonna hit Q. Create a layer mask based on this. Look at my alpha. Uh, this part's a little messy, but that's fine. And then I'm gonna just wand tool all of this, select, modify, expand, invert that, and boom, we got our mask. Cool, let's find a good sky. So I have all my references up on a different monitor, but uh, I'll be pulling them in as I'm testing them out. That one would be cool. I want to do kind of like dark and, and gloomy, but still that keep that those rays of um, of sun coming through. Like I, I like that we're getting those nice highlights on those buildings. So I'm going to do what I can to to keep those. Maybe something like that. Am I masking to the last solid pixel? Um, you know, I'm masking to the shape that I want. I'm not trying to match the pixels exactly. I just want to get a nice clean silhouette um, and find the blend points. So, um, you know, I'm not really concerned if I get like those, those half opacity or aberration pixels in there. This might be nice. It's gonna seem silly that I'm spending this much time on a sky when I'm, I'm probably gonna haze it out to the point where it, it, it's, almost unseeable, but um, that's just kind of my approach to everything anyways. It's like, I want to work fast and efficiently with the grunt work, um, but when it comes to actually like layering up a map painting, I want every layer of depth to be, um, to work uh, on its own and be standalone and, and not try to shortcut things. Cause I feel like that's where it's, it ends up being faster if you just do it right the first time. And, and you're not just like, oh, I have this one sliver of sky that if I want to adjust it, um, you know, I'm going to have to patch in a bunch of stuff. So I think this one's good. I think we'll, we'll stick with this. And I'm just going to color time it a bit. One of the things I want to do when I color time it is, is you can see if I put a levels adjustment on top of this whole thing, there's a lot of red in those shadows, red and, and yellows. Um, and I want to make sure that the sky has those same red and yellows. Um, I'm going to still play it a bit cooler, but just get it a little closer so it starts to fit in a bit more. Like you can see just with that little adjustment, how much more this is starting, starting to hit it. And I can darken it down and then lift them a bit. And that kind of, that'll help. 
And again, I'm gonna cover so much of this friggin' sky up, but I do want it to work on its own. Uh, is this... Is this going to be for video footage or just a static image? Uh, I'm, I'm doing this as a static image, um, but the way that I create map paintings anyways, uh, because I layered up in this way, it, it could be projected and, and you could animate a camera through with just like a, a little more work. Cool. So let's get, um, let's get some of this destruction in here. Now that we can carve out from the plate and have a sky behind it. Um, so let me just recarve what I want to get rid out of, uh, rid of. Get a bit of this. And then, and then here. Why brush tool masking over the pen tool and pads? I saw you using a scatter brush, which makes a ton of sense for what you were trying to grab. But do you notice the speed difference between brush masking and path masking? Yeah, um, I'm so much faster with the brush. Uh, to to try to mask this whole thing out with, with paths and like trying to like get your little vertices in there and then like get in here and you know, do that, like, you know, it's, that's a lot more work. And, and I feel like, um, you know, for me personally, and especially working on a Cintiq, uh, A, I can do it a lot faster and B, when I see little things like this chromatic aberration that I want to fix, I can go back in here with a brush and just pull that right out versus adjusting a bunch of vertices. Um, so I, I prefer using the brush. Um, but the other thing, like what I'll end up doing with this, this whole piece is um, on those types of edges, um, I'll create like an edge layer and I'll grab like a, a color here and I'll just paint right on that edge and on all these like bright bits. And I'll set this to darken. And I can even just do a blending mode since since it's a little too dark and we can just hit those edges. And maybe go back in here and, and clean this up a bit. But that's how I'd like quickly get rid of that like chromatic aberrations. And you can see that up at this uh, light post too. So I can just grab this color and boom. Cool, so let's, uh, let's start laying in some destruction. So I pulled a bunch of like destruction references. Um, Usually I just slap on a ton of things and just see what, what fits and what doesn't. Um, yeah, so let's just start dropping them in. And actually, I'm going to bring these in as smart objects. So just drag them right in so that I don't have to worry about the resolution going up and down. I'm going to drop these behind the plate. That might be cool. Just a little like perspective shift, this could work. Let's mark that in green. And let's see what else we got. Um, one of the things with destruction too that uh, 
that I see as like a common pitfall is um, a lot of times people just sprinkle even destruction all over the place without any real idea of, of how that destruction happened. So it's like if it's evenly placed on all parts of all buildings, there's got to be a reason for it. And, and the more of a reason, even if it's not explicitly said, more of a reason you have in your mind while you're painting, um, it's going to come through and it's going to feel more logical and, and more realistic. Um, so I haven't, I haven't really come up with a reason for this destruction yet. Um, you know, I, I, I guess it would be something like, a, like this was a battle zone. So there's like a, well, it's kind of hard because I, I want to do kind of a city city top thing. So I'm going to break my own rule and create a story based on the painting that I want to do. Because um, if, if you're doing a war zone, uh, then then really all the destruction, there should be more destruction on the bottom floors because that's where the fighting is taking place. Um, and then maybe one or two buildings clipped um, from, from like uh, tanks that shot off. Um, or you could do like uh, like a bombing run, which which would have like completely collapsed buildings um, from where the bombs hit, and then maybe like um, some secondary damage around those. Uh, which actually that sounds like a good plan. Like that's that's kind of what I'll I'll hint towards is like a um, city that just got bombed, so that you know we we have these areas of total destruction where where a bomb hit. Um, and then maybe like splash damage of like, you know, where, where maybe like an RPG hit the corner of a building and then, uh, you know, well, then got its second shot right and actually blew up the building. It's, uh, that's like one of the things, um, in, in monster movies too, especially, I just see that like, Every, every building just looks like an atomic bomb went off. Um, and I'm, I'm just as guilty of it. That's, that's definitely what, what we were doing on, um, on Godzilla. Just like utter destruction that didn't really make too much sense. Uh, but, but we really, like after a bit, after doing the first couple of destruction paintings for that, we were like, okay, let's, Let's try to make a little more sense of like how the monsters are fighting through the city and and where the the splash damage would happen and if buildings collapsed from from them tumbling each other into them. Here we go. Love this just because we got um, nice lighting in here too. That kind of matches our plate. Like this might be good for this bottom piece over here. And then I'll get a couple more and then we'll start integrating these in. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, see like this could be a perfect thing of like, um, having that feeling like this got blown up and the splash damage kind of clipped the top of that that building uh, or things were crumbling or, or, or the explosion kind of happened right at the edge which blew off shrapnel in both ways. Sorry, there, there is a little bit of lag. Um, so hopefully the, you guys are being able to understand my, my crappy notes while I'm talking through them. this one for that building right there. Cool. Couple different options. I'm 
yeah, now I'm really looking at like what's going to move the eye around, um, which of these lines are going to help me pull the eye to that background. Like maybe this is a better fit for over here. Mm, that's pretty good though. Yeah, this stage of the painting is, is usually utter chaos of just like trying to get these, trying to figure out the puzzle. Um, but I think something like this is gonna be good. Does matte painting need perfect drawing skills? Uh, no. I mean, drawing skills help with everything, but um, you know, we use a lot of technology now and, and uh, that's actually one of my biggest beefs with the way things are going right now is, is that, um, that people do rely a little bit too much on technology and it's not that you need drawing skills and you need to be able to like create a masterpiece with a pencil and paper, um, but you do need to know the, the fundamentals uh, of just art like art history of, of color theory and composition. Um, these things are just, uh, I feel like they're becoming rarer and rarer and they're what end up separating um, great painters from, from not as great painters. Um, Cause at a certain point, everyone can use the tools. Uh, so what, where do you go from there? Like, what do you do when you know the tools just as well as anyone else? And why are, why are clients coming to you over them? And it, it ends up not being about your execution skills, um, but about all that other stuff. It's, you know, can you, can you understand a director's vision right away? Can you um, create a, a composition or a narrative that helps tell the story? Can, can you reference, um, you know, art, art history in, in order to find the, the parallels and see what other people did to create the emotions that you're going for, or the mood? So I wouldn't say drawing skills, but I would say just art skills. Yes, like spend some time on those foundations and fundamentals. Uh, okay, let me answer some questions. Um, does map, okay. Are there copyright issues with map paintings and do you use stock websites for images? Um, yeah, I use Shutterstock for images and I pay for them and I have a commercial licenses for them. So, um, you know, that, that can be a tricky thing if you're working for a big client. Um, you got to make sure that you're not giving them images that you don't have the rights to use. Um, so, like, make sure your, your business is in order. Cool, I'm just gonna... And then uh, you worked on the movie Her. Why and how do you choose the colors? Uh, Her had an incredible uh, DP who, who shot a lot of beautiful stuff. Um, I wish I could claim responsibility for the color palette on, on that movie. Um, but really, I was just matching to the look and feel that, that Spike Jones and that DP were going for. So here I'm gonna adjust the perspective a bit and kind of split this into two pieces. Can matte painting skills be utilized for concept design? They can. If you're a fast enough matte painter, just do fast matte paintings for concepts. Uh, no, they, it's the technical skills can because it's executing an image um, and, and, and then the like, um, the core skills of, of creating compositions and colors to sell a mood and an idea, you know, that's that's very helpful in concept. The the biggest difference is your job as a concept artist is to generate ideas. Um, whereas in map painting it's it's kind of executing and adding to an idea. Um, so they are different skills, but but they can aid each other.
I'm gonna do this really rough just because we got we don't have that much time together and trying to bust out a painting in uh, in an hour is pretty uh, pretty difficult. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try to give you guys as much at least techniques and knowledge as I can while I'm while I'm here. Um, cool. So I have this. Uh, I'm actually gonna get rid of this layer mask. Condense this down. Let's just call this building zero one base. And then I'm gonna color correct right on top of this. Just using that helper's levels adjustment to see my shadows, swap it around, see the highlights. And just lift those mid-tones. And we're gonna have to do some painting on top of to get those highlights really working. But I think that kind of gives us something to work with. There's a little bit too much blue spill from, from the original photo. So I'm gonna go in here with just a brush um, and kind of clear some of that up. Just throw that onto a color. And do the same thing with the edges where there's a lot of these little tidbits that I just wanna make sure come through. So just gonna paint on low opacity right on top of them so those happen. And I, I would, yeah, normally do a much better mask on this whole thing. Um, and really take the time on it. But I want to show you how I like get this this destruction working inside the actual building. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring our plate right on top of here. And I'm gonna do an empty layer mask. And now I'm gonna start to bring back in the plate. And I wanna bring back in the actual structural parts of the plate. So we have these beams coming up. So I wanna keep some of these structural pieces that are keeping it from collapsing. Is there a specific image resolution range you shoot for in your final matte painting? Um, that all depends on the client, on what their final delivery is. Uh, but I usually double the resolution of whatever a project is delivering at. Um, usually means painting 4K. But, uh, and, and if it's my own paintings, um, if it's something quick like this, I'll stick with 4K uh, be, because I don't want to be bogged down by the file size. Um, but for like my, my big personal paintings, I usually do 8K. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here, just blowing out these walls and and kind of, you know, this is a good way to like start to have like scratches and cuts in the building of like where something crumbled. Um, I usually go back after I get the main frame in there, I'll go back and add some of that stuff. And see, this is a really nice opportunity for us to connect that destruction. So I'm gonna move the destruction up a bit just forward a bit so I can connect this in there. Maybe up a tad.
maybe bring back some of this and we can find like a cool way to transition that into the destruction. Yeah, a big part of it is not just like throwing random rubble on top of, of, of images. It's really looking at how the structure of the buildings are and, and doing your best to just kind of align your perspective and your structures of the destruction with with the actual um, the plate buildings. It's like here we have this nice opportunity to connect these roofs. Maybe we'll just keep the pillars on this thing. Cool. I'm gonna create a nice edge here to let that uh, these wires and pipes kind of show through. And right now, the plate is a bit blurrier than these source images, um, but I usually wait to the end to, to get all of that stuff matched up and, and make sure that the, uh, the blurs and noise and all of that stuff is, is working. Now I'm gonna just go in with like a, kind of like a grunge brush. I don't really pay attention to what brushes I use, but um, you know, I, I just try to grab something with a little bit of texture just to break up lines and, and start to bring in some of these colors into the destruction or give it like a different edge. That's not the best brush for it, but. And another thing I want to do, I'm going to break some windows on here. Actually, let's get let's get this little balcony piece to carry through because that's all moving our eye into the background, which is what I want. What's your favorite PS plugin and your most used shortcut? Uh, I don't use any plugins to Photoshop. Um, we spent a lot of time working in different studios, and so uh, when you go into a place, you never know what the setup is going to be. So I, I made sure I was never reliant on plugins or custom. Like I use the default everything in Photoshop. Um, actually, most of the time, I use the default little brush too. Like only every once in a while I'll switch to like a leaf brush or something. Um, and, and then shortcuts, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, maybe spacebar is my must use shortcut. <laughs> Just moving around and control spacebar drag to zoom. Those are like, I, I use, I'm a shortcut junkie. I, I don't think I could tell you where anything in this program actually is in the menus. Uh, I'm going to leave this where it is for now and, and move on um, just because there's a lot of stuff I want to get to. The building's a bit tricky. It's kind of at a very, very weird angle. Like I might be better off just using something more abstract for it. Like you can't really tell what's going on with this image.
get rid of these little tidbits. Max, do you tend to select and mask for masking out detailed branches and such? Uh, branches suck. There's like, I wish I could tell you a non-painful way for branches. Um, I mean, you can use the uh, color select, um, which, is, which is what I did for that first destruction building. Um, so you can do something like this. I'll do it again here. Um, it's not really gonna work well for this image, but still. Color range, select color range, and then just grab something and adjust the fuzziness. Um, and that'll get you like part of the way there, you know, and, and but, but you're just gonna have to do some cleanup work on top of there. So uh, in order to get branches, like especially close up branches to be like completely photographic and realistic, it's just a lot of time and pain in the ass, but, but sometimes you just gotta do it. Cool, so we'll do something like this. Actually, that works pretty well. Let's get rid of some of these, uh, you know, using that, the, you know, the tough thing with branches is there's a lot of specular highlight on them. Um, so when you do that color range um, tool, it's, it's just gonna leave a lot of the highlights missing and you're gonna have to kind of go in and paint them back in. So let me ask you guys a question. Um, I am going to be, I'm gonna be doing these streams. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be shooting for every week. Uh, do you guys want me to try a different, uh, show, show kind of a different genre or theme each week? Or do you guys, would you guys prefer if I take a painting from beginning to end? Cause I'm, I'm not gonna be able to get a finished painting in, in an hour, but you know, maybe if we if we spend a month on a painting or like two weeks on a painting, we can at least get a little further. Um, but what would you guys prefer? Okay, cool. That uh, seems pretty, pretty much like all of you guys want to see the whole process. So stick with the painting and uh, take it from beginning to end. Um, that's awesome. I love doing that. So um, it'll be cool. We can that that kind of takes the pressure off of today a bit because we can keep going on this painting and, and make it into something you know really badass and um, you know take it all the way. building is so weird. What's even going on in the, it's just the perspective that's bizarre. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna carve into it more here. So I'm gonna create a quick layer mask just to get this um, traffic light out of the way. And it's messy, but whatever.
now I can paint right back onto it. Bringing some of these balconies back, maybe just like a little, a little piece that isn't destroyed. I'll back, go back in here and kind of clean this up a bit, kind of chew away at it. So that's like a collapsed roof and honestly there's not a lot of whole sense to this but usually I try to spend more time really thinking about how all this destruction is going to work and you know actually having like a purpose for every wound in the in the building but for this it's like yeah we're going to try to just get as far as we can today so I'm going to just do whatever looks cool which is what I was complaining about before. <laughs> uh, what do you think about HDR photos and do you think it's useful? Uh, they're useful for lighting in 3D um, and I'm sure that there's some highly technical Photoshop wizards out there that say that's the only way to do paintings. Uh, I am not one of them. Um, yeah, I, I don't really use them. They're, they're more of a pain in the ass than they're worth because it's kind of hard to find a lot of images of exactly what you're looking for that are all going to have that kind of uh, range. Um, and then what is the strategy to create a specific atmosphere? Just in theory, we will see it over the weeks. Oh, I will, I will dive into atmosphere. That is one of my favorite things to do. Um, so, I mean, one of the things I think is just super important in atmospheres is, is lighting um, and, and the colors and the palette. Um, you know, this, we could do a destruction painting that looks like it's the end of the world and everything is going to hell, um, but it would be a very different color palette. Um, just to like quickly go into that, like if, if I wanted this to look like everything was going to hell, it, it would be more like, like this um, with like burning reds and oranges um, here, even just like bringing in this. And this is just like super quick, but like everything going to hell. Um, you know, this this feels like you're in the middle of just the worst day. Um, but like the, the kind of what I'm going for is this like this gloomy, uh, melancholy, but optimistic um, destruction, which, you know, is, is more bringing in kind of these bright highlights and, and you could throw these kind of like triumphant God rays um, coming through. And, and this is like, yeah, it's, this is a dark scene, but there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, and, and that starts to feel optimistic now. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get into that with this for sure, but I just wanted to like quickly Going to show you like how color and lighting can can really do that. Um, how many paintings do you think is good to have in your por portfolio to get noticed? Um, yeah, I, it's hard. I you know I think that um, you need to have a range uh, of of work to kind of show that you can you can do whatever a client might need. Um, but you also need consistency. So if I see a portfolio that only has two good paintings, it makes me think, well, I don't know if they can hit that level every time. Um, 
I don't think there's an exact number for a portfolio, but I, I'd like to see 10. If, if I'm hiring someone, I'd like to see at least 10 pieces that have a consistent quality. Because uh, if you can hit it 10 times, I, I'm pretty confident you can hit it for me. Um, and then, hey, Max, I just got, found out you worked on the Pirates of the Caribbean teaser with the Gold Skull. I wondered uh, who worked on it. Would love a quick process explanation um, or your thoughts on working on it. Yeah, uh, we did that at Elastic. Um, I actually wasn't map painting for that. I was I spent a chunk of time as art director at Elastic and um, just did a bunch of designs and, and designed that um, that teaser. Uh, but it, that's like a whole different animal from map painting. Um, and we can we can dive into design pitch mood boards and stuff like that where it's all about the mood um but that uh you know that that would be a completely different subject and probably a different stream and i know you guys are like oh this has only been going for 50 minutes and it looks like he just started yeah that's true Go with this um I'll go a little a little bit later, but probably have to cut it off uh, in the next like twenty minutes. Um, but at least let me get these buildings in here. Uh, when when I'm working, like when you are doing a painting that has a lot of tedious work in the front end, like this, of so just like a lot of masking and laying things, um, it's it's really hard, especially with like a, a painting that you're going to be working on for for weeks. Um, endurance becomes like one of the biggest tests. Uh, and, and one of the ways that I get past it is I don't get up or leave a painting until I hit the next milestone in that painting. Um, so if I need to mask out 10 elements, I'm going to sit down until I get all 10 of those elements masked out um, and, and then move on. Because uh, otherwise, if you leave one stage uh, halfway finished, it's it's a lot harder to pick, pick back up on the painting and, and you start to drain your endurance. But if we at least get one stage finished, then we're excited to come back to it because we know we have the next stage waiting for us. I'm trying to line these, um, these floors up to the actual building. Just these top two floors at least. I think that'll get us there. Masked. I'm going to use this uh, quick mask again and I'm going to go super fast because we don't have too much time and we can always go back and clean this stuff up. It's not usually how I do it. I usually try to like just get it right the first time so I don't need to think about it. But, um, but I do want to get enough destruction in this painting that you guys want to see it get further down the line. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, what I'm really excited for in this painting is, is kind of doing that far distant background. Um, like, I, I think that's gonna be a lot of fun to, to add giant towers that are destroyed and, and getting the lighting on those. Rubble and tidbits. Get just these hangy things. Um, another thing that I didn't mention is when you're pulling reference for your destruction paintings, um, make sure the reference that you're pulling is of buildings that are using the same kind of materials as the ones in your plate. So like, I'm not using a bunch of, you know, wooden shacks that have been collapsed or residential 
houses that have roofs collapsed. Uh, I'm really trying to find more industrial concrete buildings that are being destroyed um, so that it's, it's easier to integrate and also it looks like it's a part of the building. We're gonna mask this out super rough and we're gonna see how this even plays in. Like, I'm not quite sure if this will work. Do you use other artists as ref or more natural photography? Um, it, it really depends what I'm trying to do. Um, I try to stay away from using concept artists as reference. Uh, that's for sure. Like if I'm going to use artists as reference, I'm going to try to find artists that are outside of our industry so that it's not um, regurgitating the same stuff back in. Um, and, and also like when I do a painting, I, I want to do something different than what everyone else is doing. Like I don't, like, you guys do a, a ton of incredible work that gets like art station. I can't even look at it anymore because it just makes me feel like a piece of shit. Um, but like, I, I don't want to do what all of you, everyone else is doing on there. If I see the same painting 10 times on art station, then I like will not go anywhere near it. And I'll just take that color palette off my radar. Um, yeah, I, I use, I use Tumblr a good amount because, um, because it has a lot more variety of artists, I think. Like Pinterest kind of s tends to st suffer from um, kind of the same stuff getting polluted back into it. Um, but, uh, but Tumblr at least has some, some different artists and, and different mediums um, a lot more, I think. So yeah, something like this should be fine. Probably want to add that pull back in. Or maybe not. But another thing we could always do if we wanted to is we could layer some destruction on top of itself. Something like that. You know, just for the innards. Um, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't want noticeable repetition, but maybe we can flip this, let's take a look. Let's just use it for the innards. These two, building 03 base, what's this image? I don't know if we're gonna use that. I'm gonna just put these into a ref folder. get this color corrected and in here. Uh, where do you generally find your reference? Um, I use uh, Shutterstock. Um, and do you use 3D in your workflow? Uh, I do use 3D in my workflow, but it all depends on what the painting is and, and you know what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, to do a painting like this in 3D would be a ton of, uh, I think, wasted time. Um, Cause like sculpting that for that little piece versus how long it takes to drop a photo in there. Um, you know, if you have the assets, great. But, uh, but if you don't, um, you know, I, I think uh, uh, it all just depends on, on, on the timeline and, and what you're doing. But uh, yeah, I use every tool at my disposal for, for, you know, any client work. Um, let's just 
check out the levels on here. Now notice I'm not matching to the things around it because this is further in and it's, it is gonna be darker. Like it's, it's almost better to, to match to down here to these storefronts because um, there's a lot of light and reflection coming off of those windows. And you, don't, you don't want the insides to look like that. What hardware am I using? Um, I'm painting on a Cintiq 27 right now, um, and I have a like custom-built PC, i7, um, dual 1080s, um, all running off of an SSD. Do you light the buildings yourself, or do the images have the lighting to begin with? Uh, these images, I found images that had good lighting to begin with, um, which makes my job a lot easier. Um, but I will go back and do a lighting pass, um, you know, towards the end. That's like, that's like the cherry on top is getting to go through and, and uh, play with the lighting a lot more. Um, and like as I go, I'll see things like these pillars are, are like way too bright. Um, so I'll, I'll tone these down um, as I go, just if it's something like super blatant. Um, So that, because I don't want it to pull your eye. Um, you can even create it like a layer mask out of it so that you can hone it in even more. Like maybe you do want to create like more of a shadow in here. Let me give that another try. How do you delete stuff outside of your selection? Um, I'm trying to think of, of what you mean. Um, if you're talking about like when I, uh, let's see. Let's pull something good. If you're talking about this, if I did like the select color range, um, like I might not understand your question, so I apologize ahead of time. I'm going to invert this, um, get these levels to get a little closer. Uh, you know, if I want this building, then I'll just like lasso tool it. Control shift I to invert the selection and then hit delete um, to like delete everything outside of my selection. Cool. Let's just get this. Um, this building in here and looking and looking good so that we can we can feel like we at least got a couple of these in and, and are excited to like do more or like something like this is a good example I'll like I'll click on the layer mask and see like hey there's bits I forgot about um, and just lasso tool those and delete them but it's all being deleted on a layer mask. Like at any point I can bring back the full image. Holy specs. <laughs> I, have a, I have a very good friend who's been building my computer for years, for like the last like maybe six years. He's been, cause I, I, am, I am not a, a computer like hardware guy i don't i don't really know much about it i just kind of trust him to make sure that i'm i'm good to go um so i've been very fortunate with that and i'm going to switch over to actually a flat brush it's like one of the things i haven't been using in this stream but um for buildings it helps a lot just to like not have those round edges all the time. Um, let's see where we're where we're at with this. We wanna we wanna push the eye over here. Take a look at our sketch. Oh, we were gonna go a lot higher with our sketch. That's no, okay. Um, 
that just leaves more room for a cool background. So I'm going to use these like uh, pillars that are kind of left with the blown out windows, just these support beams that are left. And I can try to work that, that piece into um, this little horizontal to make it fit in with the actual building structure. And I'll probably go back and do that. Um, and then here, how do we want to transition this? I want to do something like this is broken. These are all glass windows. So if they're going to break, kind of got to have it shatter. But we can we can figure that out in a bit or later on. Um, and then kind of have just a piece of this uh, of this roof hanging off. Can connect this here. Bust out that window. Let me get rid of this whole plate area. Connect this up. And I want to keep a piece of this, but have it kind of splinter. So it becomes that, uh, that floor that's hanging off. Are you planning to teach some technical stuff in Nuke for map painting? Um, I am. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on something. Um, yeah, I haven't found a lot of good Nuke projection resources out there, and there probably are a ton out there, and I just haven't looked hard enough. But I'm going to try to create the one that I want to exist in this world. Cool. I know we're running a little late, but um, we'll just get get this at least started, and we can finish up this building next time we come in. Uh, cool. I want to have this kind of overhanging. I'm gonna throw a soft light on here too because we are high up and up against the sky. So I just wanna brighten this up a little bit. Go back to a soft brush. And like these kinds of highlights and stuff like that is the stuff that like towards the end I'll go and get rid of so that they're um, so that everything's cohesive. Um, and right now, you know, one of the things that I see that, uh, that isn't working is, um, this doesn't make sense that you'd have a floor hanging this high up that wouldn't just crumble or collapse. So, you know, things like that is where you need to put like a support structure or s something to like justify it still being there. Um, or get rid of it and, and, and have, have everything uh, kind of collapsing because there is no support. Um, so things like that are, are, are you know, how, how you get, it's those little details that, that make something feel realistic is, is having it actually make sense in, in your mind and in, in just like how gravity works and stuff like that. 
Um, so how am I going to do this? I'm going to do this. like this. I'll put a couple structures in there to keep it going and then I'll take this down a bit. So it's not as hanging. Now that starts to feel a little more like gravity could work there. So this is our sketch. This is kind of where we got to today. There's definitely um, definitely a lot to do to it still. Uh, if you guys want to keep going with it still after seeing the, the mess that it's in right now, then we will. Um, this kind of goes back to like what I would say is the valley of suck. Like paintings are gonna look real shitty before they look good and like this ain't anything great yet, um, but this is where the, that endurance kicks in, where you gotta just work through it and, and put in the time and, and get all these pieces in here. And, and at a certain point, it will click. Um, you know, the last thing I'm gonna do before uh, saving this out is um, when I'm done for the day, I like to make my notes while I'm, I'm fresh uh, on the painting and like know what I wanna be doing. Um, so kind of just like my to-do list um, rather than doing it after not seeing the painting for a while. This way I can open up the file, hit on my notes and go, okay, this is what I was gonna tackle. And you know, what, what I wanna do is I actually wanna like crumble this down a bit more. Um, this is feeling a little awkward to me. Uh, probably open this up. Um, overall, add destruction. Uh, and, and then kind of just sort this. Uh, I'll just say clean this up. And then here. Make pretty. Um, and now next time I come, I can go, okay, these are what I'm going to do to what I've already started. And then afterwards I have my sketch and go, okay, this is what I'm going to do, uh, next is, is get these, um, get this background kind of in here. Uh, once those two things are done, we can really start to play with lighting and adding like burn marks and scratches and rubble on the ground and stuff like that. Um, which I think will be a lot of fun. Uh, let me answer any last questions that you guys have, and then we can um, we can call it call it a day, and you guys can go about your your beautiful afternoons. Um, isn't Nuke used for video compositing and stuff? Um, it is, but it's also used for uh, matte painting projections. So because compositors are using Nuke, um, if you're a matte painter, it's great to be able to hand off your files. In the in the full, in the program that they're going to be using, um, and it's really cool when you can set up your whole map painting in kind of two and a half D space and, and animate a camera flying through it. And what are tour tufts on, or what are your thoughts on uh, Nuke versus Fusion Eight? Is Fusion Eight a good time investment if I don't know Nuke and I don't have the money? Yeah. <laughs> the foundry is the mafia of visual effects. Like it's, uh, it's insane. Um, and Nuke is a really expensive program, but it's a really incredible program. Um, super powerful. Uh, I've never used Fusion, so I have no clue. For for me, I I bite the bullet and, and get Nuke. But um, I understand that a lot of people can't do that. Um, Cool. So yes, I'm gonna try to be. Uh, yes, I'll be on next Tuesday, and I'm gonna be try to be streaming every Tuesday. Uh, I like. I'm a morning person, so I'm gonna keep with this 10 a.m. thing, and y'all are spread through the world. So I don't know. Um, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know what time would work for everyone, but this one works for me. So hopefully, you guys can can make it. Um, yeah. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, we can uh, wrap this up. And also, um, 
feel free to like hit me up on email and and social medias and all of that stuff so um uh yeah i'm i'm always around and i try to get back to people's emails um sometimes it takes me a little bit but i i try to make sure i respond um cool well thanks guys uh have an amazing day and um yeah i'll see you guys next week <laughs>